What does it take to disrupt an industry? What does it take to disrupt the software industry, an industry growing and evolving so quickly? Is it time? Is it a great product? Does it take blunt recklessness or careful consideration? What about having vision, passion, and dedication? From manufacturing industries to service industries, from field services to accounting firms, from retail to e-commerce, from NGOs to education, from small companies to large corporations. Together, we move mountains. This is what makes Odoo unique, a passionate community. Millions of open source developers, partners, and users working together towards a common goal, making companies a better place one app at a time. This is how we improve everyone's work life. This is how we give people the tools to do more in less time. This is how, as a community, we disrupt industries. So it's no surprise that we all gather year after year to discuss our future. Thank you for joining us. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to Odoo Connect, the very first edition of Odoo's annual conference in the US. I'm so excited to be here with you today for three days of product conferences, networking, and fun. You know, this is the largest conference we've ever organized in the US with over 2,000 registrations, a few additional thousand viewers online live and more than 100 talks that we've organized just for you for the next three days. But this is not the most exciting thing. The most exciting thing is Odoo 13, our latest version that we have released only a couple of weeks ago. And my goal this morning is to give you a glimpse of all the new features we've added in Odoo 13. And let me tell you, it's not going to be easy. Uh, there is a lot to cover. You know, Odoo is a suite of integrated business applications that has a very large scope. Um, CRM, sales, purchase, inventory, manufacturing, accounting and finance, project management, and so on. And over the years, as we've, been as we've built those apps, uh, we've been growing as a company. Uh, we've also had to grow our marketing initiatives and operations. And I'd like to talk about marketing a little bit. You know, marketing is really complex, um, from SEO to uh, content management, campaigns management, email marketing, lead marketing, marketing automation, so many different tools used by companies here and there that are not talking with each other, uh, so many different roles in those marketing teams that need to coordinate between their members on all these topics. And, uh, you know, we, we want it to do something about this. Uh, Odoo has been good at marketing apps, integrating those apps with uh, things like uh, surveys and, and blogs and events management. But there is something that's, that's more important than everything I've mentioned when it comes to marketing. There's a piece of marketing that's really important. It's the first thing that people see when they encounter your business, and that's your website. So, we have decided to make a number of improvements on the website uh, from two main angles. The first one is design. Uh, so we have made sure to improve our website builder and our designs of front-end apps to make them beautiful by default. Uh, Odoo, Odoo website is integrated with those front-end apps uh, that uh, provide an access for your visitors to things like uh, the blog. And this is what the blog in Odoo 12 looked like. It was functional. Uh, you could share, it on, share your blogs on, on social media, subscribe, but we really wanted to make it more impactful for your visitors. 
And so the blog in Odoo 13, we've put our designers at work, and it now looks like this. And similarly, we've done that with other front-end apps. As another example, our forum in Odoo 12 used to look like that. It was powerful. We've had tens of thousands of questions and hundreds of thousands of replies, but it was a little dull. We wanted to do something a little better. And so the forum in Odoo 13 looks like this. And then another example is Odoo Events. You know, Odoo Events is really powerful. You can manage thousands of events like this one, different prices, different types of tickets, uh, automated emails, reminders. Um, but we really wanted to improve the designs of those events page to match the quality of the events that you would organize. And so we've also worked on the designs of the events page, and they now in Odoo 13 look like this. But design of front-end pages is one thing. There is something else that's important when you talk about design, and that's the themes, the themes of your websites. And we have themes, we have official themes that were available for Odoo Enterprise customers, and we've also had third-party themes that were available via our Odoo App Store. But we really wanted to make sure that everyone in the world could benefit from or themes that we have developed ourselves and make them available for Odoo Enterprise and Odoo Community. And that's the reason why we've decided to make all of our official themes free and open source immediately. <laughs> now, design for the Odoo website is one thing. The other angle is the flexibility that we wanted to provide to people writing content, designing those pages, and the only way to come up with a flexible system, a flexible mechanism for the Odoo website is with the building blocks. And so we've worked on improving the building blocks mechanism in Odoo website, and for this I would like to show you an example. So whenever you go to Odoo website, you have a uh, banner on the left that allows you to drag and drop uh, blocks like this and structures, I can add a few columns here, I can modify some padding, and I can start typing in line. It's a WYSIWYG uh, display that allows me to add some, some text everywhere. And now we have a new banner on the left that gives me more uh, properties and capabilities on those blocks. For example, I can change uh, a background color like this, uh, or I can come to my columns and decide that I actually want four of them. Uh, and just in one click like this, I can start modifying my, my page. Uh, but we also had another popular request, is a new element uh, that is right here, is a mega menu. And as you can see, TMS is you would have to go in the background, start dealing with elements, maybe some technical things uh, to, to make modifications. Here, the same principles apply. I can click here, make modifications, and obviously project management should not be in finance, so I get to move this right away from here, save, publish, and my page is available. So when it comes to marketing, as I said, we've Odoo has had a lot of apps already that were integrated. Uh, the ability to send emails, the ability to reach out to audiences, but we wanted to go further. And for this, uh, we figured that there were other ways to reach out to the segments and the external audiences and prospects out there that you wanted to target. So one additional new app that we have developed for version 13 is the SMS marketing, the ability to send text messages to uh, people. So let's have a look at this app. I can go to SMS marketing in Odoo, and I get to uh, create a new text message. I can call it, let's say, Odoo Connect, and I can select any one 
You know, uh, text message is very powerful in all these situations. Uh, I could, for example, decide to send a text message to attendees of this conference. And if I click on send now, uh, <laughs> the phone of anybody is ringing. <laughs> the gods of the demos are not with me, apparently. <laughs> All right, moving on. I think I don't have enough credits. Um, in terms of uh, SMS marketing, there are two ways. So sending an, a text message is really easy, you know. Uh, it's, that's not really marketing. Uh, it's fairly simple. But uh, something that's very powerful with Odoo is twofold. Number one is uh, you get to trigger those text messages according to any other operations anywhere else in Odoo. Imagine sending a text message to a customer to notify them that their product ha has shipped. Imagine sending a text message to a vendor whenever a purchase order has been confirmed. Imagine sending a text message to an employee to inform them that their uh, PTO request has been approved. All those things are possible with the integration of text messages inside your Odoo system. Another aspect why it's extremely powerful is that it allows you to keep track of the whole process and how your text message campaigns apply. You get to see how many leads, how many quotations, how many invoices, how much revenue, and the overall return on investment you get from um, um, sending these text message campaigns. So now we can reach out to customers with um, emails, with text messages, uh, but nowadays, there is something else that we cannot ignore anymore. It's to reach out to external audiences with social marketing, social media. And you know, social media, it's not always easy. Uh, your teams will tweet in the morning. They will have different accounts, their personal accounts, the company account. We have an account for the events. Uh, across different platforms, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and others. And they will collect likes, replies, uh, generate engagement, but they won't really know why. I mean, they won't, we will not really know um, if it's worthwhile or not. And so we wanted to uh, do something about this and centralize the entire activity around social media in a single place. And that's the reason why we've created a new social media app. So if we have a look, we have now social media uh, here in Odoo 13. And here I'm connected with an account, and I get to follow different uh, keywords or channel or hashtags. I can click refresh because there's new content. And um, I can write a new post directly from here by using my Twitter or my LinkedIn account. If I have several accounts, it's, it works too. I can um, type some text and see how it's going to show on this platform uh, as I click on them. I can get that part of a campaign and again uh, find how many leads, how much revenue is generated through those social media campaigns. I can even schedule later, and you know, uh, we release versions, we make announcements on a regular basis. It allows to have teams to coordinate on an announcement, making sure that it's going to be posted at the right time uh, in order to make sure that everyone is aware of the planning of your communications. So it could be uh, on the 19th, for example. And I also have access to all my feeds, so I can, for example, uh, click here and see some replies and reply right away from the application. I can also add a stream, select my account, 
And if I want to follow additional keywords like Odoo Connect, I get to add it as simply as this. And a new column will be added and allow me to uh, start engaging with that community. So now we have, we have a website. We have the ability to reach out to audiences, email, text message, social media. But there is another way to reach out to audiences. You know, um, emails have an opening rate of around 1%, not that much higher. There is another mechanism that's much more powerful, much more efficient. And that mechanism is push notifications. You know push notifications are the native messages that you receive on your devices, whether it's on your desktop via Chrome or Firefox, or directly on your phone. And those opening rates are even over 5%. So we wanted to take advantage of this and include push notifications in Odoo as well. So if I stay in social media, actually, uh, I, will, I would be able to write a post and select a push notifications to everyone who has su subscribed to my website. And here I actually am managing two websites with Odoo. Uh, so I get to choose, uh, together with any uh, one other of my accounts, uh, a, some text, and I will see how it, it will be displayed. It will display like this. And because push notifications have additional properties, I get to specify a title and uh, a picture, uh, a URL, and start seeing how the engagement that I'm generating through those push notifications are, uh, what, how much they are generating. I even get to specify a smart time zone to send those messages uh, at a time where people are probably woken up. So we don't want to send a push notification to someone on the other side of the planet when, when they are sleeping. So all of this is possible directly from within the interface. So we have reaching out to audiences. The goal, of course, is to track them on our website. And uh, once they are on our website, uh, you know, we're going to try to get them to fill in a form. Um, but the typical problem is that a salesperson is going to try, uh, or a marketing person is going to try to uh, get a hold of this, of this person, of this visitor, maybe a few hours, maybe a few days after they've been on your website. And that extends the sales cycle. Um, because this person is not going to be available for whenever you, you call them. You're going to get their voicemail. They'll be busy in meetings. You'll send an email and wait for a reply. All of that is a lot of time wasted. We wanted to cut on that time. And so the best moment to engage with the people that you've reached out to, whether it's social media or email before, uh, the best moment is when they are available to find a solution to the problem they are trying to solve. And that moment is exactly when they are on your website. So we have made some improvements in visitors tracking for engaging with visitors at the exact moment that they are on your website in a live fashion. So let's have a look at how it looks like. Um, we have visitors in social media on our websites. And I'm going to simulate a visitor um, browsing on our website. And this visitor is right here. You see, four seconds ago, uh, we have this visitor who was on the Contact Us page. And he's speaking with nobody right now. And so I get to send him an email, or send him a text message, or send him a push notification if he had subscribed to our website notifications, or even pop up a window directly on his screen to ask him if does he need help. And just like that, I can start a conversation directly with that visitor. If it's interesting enough, I can also uh, create a lead directly about this prospect who's interested in our products. And because the live chat 
is immediately integrated with Odoo CRM, I can create in one click a lead directly from the live chat with online visitors on, uh, at the right time. So of course, the next step uh, after engaging with those audiences, bringing them to a website, talking with them, is to convert them into leads. And for that, we have Odoo CRM. Odoo CRM is very powerful, and we wanted to work on it in order to cut the time again and on improvements for sales reps to be more and more efficient. So let's see a few improvements that we've done to uh, Odoo CRM. If I go to the CRM app, I have a pipeline of my leads or opportunities, and I can click on one. And I will see the details of my lead uh, with the chatter and notes and notifications on the side. And uh, you know, typically in CRMs, you have a mechanism of scoring for the leads to know if it's a good lead, valuable one, or less valuable one. And those scoring rules are always complex. You know, should a lead or prospect located in the US have a different score than in Canada? Should there be a different score for channel A compared with channel B, uh, depending on how you, you capture that lead? It's, it's never really clear uh, it's for the sales reps, or it's sometimes hard to maintain for the marketing teams. So we, want to do, we wanted to do a better job at this, and uh, we've decided to implement a machine learning scoring system that's going to look at the entirety of the CRM and make decisions on how to score those leads based on what worked or didn't work in the past in the rest of your CRM. And this is done via the probability percentage. You see right now, it's 95%, and my CRM knows that if I don't have a valid email, I have less chance of uh, winning this deal. So whenever the email address is uh, incorrect or invalid, uh, you see the probability decreases, and the moment it becomes uh, a valid email address, it increases. If I want to, I can also override this. Uh, and in that case, Odoo will just tell me that its estimate is this, but you get to decide whether you want to override it or not. Um, another feature that we've decided to implement is cutting down on the time that sales rep uh, spend on collecting intel about the companies or the people that they are working with. You know, they are going to spend 10 minutes on LinkedIn, on Crunchbase, figuring out more information about the company, where it is in its life, uh, how, did it raise money, uh, what's the phone number of the CFO, uh, and so on. So we've introduced an enrichment uh, mechanism where whenever you click on enrich, it's going to find data that's available regarding this company or this person based on the data you already had in the lead. And here, on the right-hand side, we have additional information about the company, uh, technology used, and uh, more inform market information in the notes right here. But you know, you give 10 leads to a salesperson, and they want 20. You give them 50 leads, and they want 100. They always want more. And so we wanted to find a way to make on-demand leads generation for salespeople in one click so that whenever they wanted to get more, they could get more. Outbound leads on demands. For that, we have developed a new, a new feature to generate leads directly from your CRM. And I can, for example, generate uh, 10 new leads uh, from the state of California in, let's say, uh, real estate, and uh, I'm going to assign them to uh, this salesperson. And just like that, the system is going to gather opportunities that it's going to find online according to those criteria, and my salespeople will be able to start contacting them. And in addition to this, we'll have um, enriched data for these uh, opportunities that we will collect.
if the Wi-Fi gods are with me this time. All right. And so sure enough, sure enough, I have my opportunity, the market information, the company information, contact information, right there. Something else that we've improved in Odoo CRM, and in fact, it's a feature that's across the board available for any piece of data that would have a customer field on it is a map view. You see this little icon here? You get to see those records that we are looking at at the screen right now according to different views, whether it's a list, a chart, and so on. We've introduced a new view, the map view, that gives me uh, an immediate view on where those customers are located. And so I get to click on one. I can navigate to it. It's going to be the shortest from here. I can also drill down and see the details of this particular lead. And this is available across all Odoo apps. And finally, something that might seem small, but if you do it dozens of times every day, it's going to save you time as well, is the new ability to, to write directly formulas in any numerical field in Odoo. So if I want to know 73% of $30,000 for this lead, I just type it in and calculate it directly. Available across the board in every numerical field, any app in Odoo. So we have a website now. We, have, we are um, reaching out to external audiences with emails, SMS, uh, push notifications. We are bringing them on our, on our website. We are converting them to leads. The next logical step is to generate revenues. And for that, we have Odoo Sales Management. And Odoo Sales is really powerful. It has a lot of uh, capabilities already. But we have improved on it. And if I go to Odoo Sales and I start a quote, everything seems fairly normal. It looks like before. Everything is straightforward. You have a customer. You have a few products, quantities, prices what you would expect. But in fact, what we have built is a much stronger engine in the background, all the while staying as simple as possible to use for, for the user. So let's create a quote for this customer, and let's add a product. Let's sell some drawers. And my customer wants 18 of them. And as you can see, as I type this product in this line, I now have a new icon here that will tell me exactly how many quantities are available right now and how many quantities will be available as soon as all the delivery orders and incoming shipments are taken into account eventually. Very useful for salespeople to have that information handy at the time they are in contact with their prospects. And I even have a forecast of my quantities for this particular product. And I see that I used to have 160 of them, then we shipped out some of them down to 60, down to 25, and my customer actually wants his 18 drawers around November 12, and I will not have them. But I get to tell him, are you willing to wait for November 16, because I will have them at that time? And if yes, you can provide them this information immediately. It helps with setting the right expectation as soon as possible and commit to something you will be able to deliver to your customer. Let's add another product, and let's sell a customizable desk. And the customizable desk is going to, is a product that has a lot of variants. Uh, it's going to populate a product configurator, and you know those variants will have different attributes, different combinations. Here I have a steel desk, I have an aluminum desk that costs $50 extra, and it exists in white but not in black. So I'm, I want it in black, so I'm going to select steel, black, one of them sounds good, I can add it. But because we manage options, the system is proposing me to add also black chairs like this that goes together. You know what, I'm going to add one like this. 
And because we manage multi-layers of options in these whole product configurators with variants as well for themselves, the system now, because I selected the chairs, proposed me to select the chair floor protection. But I'm going to pass on this one for now. So when I confirm this, I will get those two new products in my sale order directly like this. Let's add another product. And let's sell an event. And when I sell an event, the system asks me, what kind of event are you selling? So I get to select the business workshop. And because I have several tickets on this event, I get to choose the proper ticket for this customer. And when I add it, the proper price is selected and the proper tax is selected. So very easy to make the right selection directly from the sale order with all these different types of products that are added. Let's add another product. And we're going to add a, a shirt. And you know, in the fashion industry and in a lot of other industries, sometimes customers are buying in bulk. Depending on the variants you can have, uh, it might be very cumbersome for a salesperson to enter one by one each of those combinations. But here now we have a grid. So we can have an extra small pink for men and a rainbow extra large. And just like that, we get to add products really quickly. And those five lines are going to be added right away like this. Now, this screen looks really similar than the sale order in the past, for one exception. You know this little icon with the three dots here? This is a new capability that allows you to select exactly what columns you want to see in that kind of list, and it's done per user. So you get to decide exactly what you want to see, and it's true across the board in any application, in any view where there is this kind of list. So we have a website. We've attracted people on our website. We've talked with them, tracked those visitors, transformed them into leads, generated revenues. The last thing that we need to take care of in order to grow our business is to delight our customers. And delighting our customers, sometimes it has to do with the industry that you're in. And that's why we've decided to focus for version 13 and for the future on more and more industry-specific apps. And for that, I'd like to start with field service. You know, field service is that industry where you will have workers or technicians that will be dispatched on site. Uh, it could be to repair a heater, a water heater, or it could be for replacing a part of a certain piece of equipment. And really, the software that needs to manage this is twofold. There is one part of a software that manages this for the back office. The back office needs to be able to schedule interventions between those technicians and the customers, and also to organize the routes of these uh, technicians to go from one customer to another one. The second part of that software is the mobile app or the tablet app that those technicians or workers that are on the go are going to use in order to track their time, in order to make sure they are spending the proper amount of time at the proper customer, or maybe to uh, re-invoice that time to the customer. That mobile app also needs to be able to give access to the worksheet for the technician to know what he's supposed to do on the job and to make notes of the work that has been performed. That mobile app also needs to be able to give access to the different parts and components that the technician might have to use for the job or maybe the products that he will upsell to the customer when, he, when he's on site. And finally, the mobile app also needs to be able to uh, set the agreement between the company or the technician and the customer, get signatures, and provide a report of the work performed to the customer. So for all of this, we've created a new app, the field service app, that's going to take care of this. And let's see how it looks. So we can go to field service. And if I take my hat off the back office, I see all the different tasks that are scheduled. I get to filter them, slice and dice, and multi-group by if I want to. And I also get to see uh, my planning by user uh, to see what employee, what technician is working on what and when. And I see that Mitchell here is a little uh, busy 
uh, today. So I get to uh, move th something with our new Gantt view, uh, just like that drag and drop, and reassigning that um, job to Mark. On the other hand, on the mobile app, uh, the technician is going to open field service, and he's going to have access to the tasks or the uh, jobs that he's supposed to work on today. Um, and so he gets to look at that, and maybe he's going to decide which one he's going to go for first by looking at the routes that would be calculated for him automatically straight from the app. From here, he can get into a job. Let's take care of this re filter replacement. He's going to see the title of the job, information about the customer, the phone and email of the customer if he gets lost, the date and times at which he's supposed to go on site, and some additional information. And he can start the clock. The clock is going to start here at the top. Uh, he works at the customer on site. And um, he's going to be able to start his worksheet. Uh, the worksheet in the field service is dynamic. It means that depending on the type of jobs, depending on the customer, depending on, on the technician, you get to uh, configure the different fields and the type of fields and labels that the worksheet will display and what kind of information will have to be uh, selected by the technician. So here we have a name, we have a manufacturer, let's imagine it's this person, we have the model of the product we'll be working on, we have a serial number, we have radio buttons, let's say it's a technical maintenance, We've, we have a, uh, text areas, check boxes, date fields, you really get to uh, design it the way you want. And finally, the signature of the technician validating that he has been doing the job according to those conditions. He can sign and save his worksheet, and the worksheet is done. The next part is uh, the products or the parts that will be used. So we have access here directly from our phone to different parts that could be used on the job, and we get to select them really quickly like this just with our finger. And as we come back, we see that four products have been selected for about $800. And we're pretty much done with our job. It was only a minute and a half. We can stop our timer, uh, add some notes. It's going to round up. In this case, configure totally configurable. And now, at this point, uh, we want to make sure that the customer is aware of this. So we can ask the customer to sign the report before we'll be sending it to them. And straight from our phone or our tablet, we get to present our worksheet report to our customers. This is you, dear customer. This is me, my company as a, uh, a technician's company. This is the time I've spent and on what. This is the products and components that I've used and for how much. And this is my worksheet with the information I've added, and this is my signature. Do you agree with this, dear customer? Sure. And you can ask your customer to sign. And just like that, your worksheet report is done, all from your phone, no configuration out of the box. And you get to print it, you get to send it, you can uh, send it automatically by email, you can schedule next maintenance uh, jobs with the same customer automatically in the future as well. So, uh, Delighting our customers is about sometimes uh, industry-specific uh, parts. Another industry that we've worked on is the rental industry. And you know with rental, there's a really complicated concept to deal with. It's the time ranges. You have a customer who's asking you for five products. He's, he's picking up two of them too early. Uh, he's giving you three of them next week, and then he's keeping one. Uh, he's late. Um, all of this is complicated to manage. And everyone has seen those Excel spreadsheets with some sort of calendars in those Excel spreadsheets that are being passed around in the, in the office by emails. It's not centralized. There is always someone who has the latest version. It's never you. And so um, we have developed a new rental app to take care of this. And for this, I would like to show you a video. Up to now, staying organized with my rooms and offices rentals was a daily challenge. Odoo Rental makes it easy to control all of my rental operations. Let's see how it works. 
When creating a quotation, I can adapt the offer in a few clicks to fit my client's needs. Of course, I can keep an eye on which product is reserved by day, week, month, or even year. It lets me avoid multiple reservations and help me schedule repairs or maintenance. Anytime, I can create reports of my rental's activity revenue by product or customer. Revenue by quarter or month. What if I need a new product? That's easy. It only takes a few clicks before being ready to be rented. And your renters want an extra day? Did they lose your key? Decide the price of those extras. Then have a look at your product's profitability with the analytic accounting and check which products you should rent with a higher price or simply stop renting. Try Odoo Rental for free on odoo.com and grow your rental business. But you know, at Odoo, we don't really like videos. We prefer demos. We have the cult of the demo, and uh, there is no reason to not look at Odoo Rental because it's so easy to use. So let's spend some time with Odoo Rental. I can find the rental app here. And when I go to the rental app, I see all my rental orders. Uh, I have a search panel on the left, which actually is not specific to rental. This is a new feature as well that's across all the apps that allow me to very quickly uh, filter through. And um, I also have a schedule. And the schedule will show me that I have a few uh, products that m are reserved or ready to be picked up by different customers. So let's put our hat of a business that's renting printers. As you can see, I have printers. My printers will be available in the coming weeks. So let's create an order for this customer. And let's add a printer. And this is the same sale order that we've seen earlier with the different types of products. It's just that now I'm using a product that's a rentable product. And let's say that my customer is interested to get it from the 12th to the 22nd. He's going to uh, bring them back at 10.30. And this is 11 days. Uh, he wants two printers. And we even manage serial orders uh, right here. So we're going to specify that printer one and printer two will be those two that he will uh, pick up. And the system is telling us that it's better for the customer to pay two times seven days rather than 11 times one day. Uh, we can override this if we want to. We also know that it's seven and a half dollars per hour of delay, and it's $75 per day of delay if he brings them back too late. So let's add this. And let's confirm. And you know, in the rental business, uh, typically you would want to get a rental agreement between you and your, and your customer. So we also get to sign documents to make sure that all the conditions are known by our customer. It could be a rental agreement. It could be any kind of other type of documents. And when we sign, we get to specify the customer. We can also send a copy to any other party if we want to. But I'm not going to go through that. Now, let's have a look at our schedule. And we see that um, if we group by product and then serial number or uh, printer one and two are indeed here reserved for the dates that our customer is interested. But let's get back to our order. And in fact, on our order 34, our customer is actually going to pick them up early. He's picking them up today. So we get to pick up, we can even do partial pickups or partial uh, returns. We validated this. And obviously, the next step is going to be the return. But you see that this order is now picked up. And if I look at my schedule, sure enough, it has been extended because it started today. And we get to tell the difference with color coding depending on what happens 
if it's only reserved and not picked up yet, if it's picked up, if it's returned, or even sometimes with this little red mark, if it's a late uh, pickup. So that's for the rental business. So we've seen um, field service management, we've, we've seen rental, but we've also made additional improvements in inventory distribution and manufacturing. And there are a number of little things that we've improved on. Odoo already has had a uh, inventory and manufacturing apps that are very powerful, and we've made uh, various improvements. To start with a blazing fast barcode scanner software. Uh, you can run Odoo barcode for a number of purposes to manage every aspect of your warehouse, whether it's incoming shipment, whether it's internal transfers, delivery orders, location barcodes, serials and lots barcodes, or, pa or packages barcodes. And you can not only run it on a handheld device that would be attached to a barcode scanner, but now you can also run it directly on your phone or, or your tablet and taking advantage directly of the camera on your phone without any additional device working out of the box. Another aspect that we've improved on manufacturing is we have revamped and made a new master pro production schedule to provide data about quantities to replenish and forecasted, forecasted stock based on the demand forecast that you specify in the system, provide more accurate information. And then we've also worked on the work order tablets, you know, those tablets that we can put on the work center and the stations of the workers in the assembly lines for them to know what to do at what time and uh, follow quality steps for particular uh, work orders that they are working on. So we've added the support for Google Slides that makes it much easier to update a worksheet uh, in these kind of circumstances and that gets dispatched to all those tablets across your workshop. And you can even get to decide which slide of, of a Google presentation is going to be displayed at different quality steps for each worker. We've also um, added an optional clock here in the top right corner for a worker to know how much time it's taking on each steps on a particular work order. It's also useful to calculate the cost of a uh, of, an of a sub-assembly or a finished goods uh, or of a lot. We've also added support for flexible quantities for process manufacturing. You know, process manufacturing are those, industri those industries like the chemical industry or the agriculture industry, where you might need 10 ounce of a particular component, but it's, it ends up being 10.3 ounce because it's not always perfect. Sometimes it's a little higher, sometimes it's a little lower. So now we support flexible quantities as well in manufacturing. We've also made improvements on the subcontracting processes where you might subcontract the, the, the sub-assembly of some of your manufacturing to a third party in order to retrieve that sub-assembly afterwards in your workshop. You need to be able to track this and figure out where your, your products and raw materials are. And then we've also made improvements on alternative uh, work centers, you know, these situations where you have more than one work center that could do the job and you want to be able to plan your work order ac accordingly. And for that, let's have a look at what it looks like if we go to manufacturing and we go to the planning and you go planning by work center, we see here the situation that assembly line one and assembly line two are capable of doing the same thing, but we have a conflict in assembly line two because two work orders are supposed to take place at the same time. So because of our new Gantt view, we get to drag and drop this work order from assembly line two to the first one and resolve that conflict. So we have a lot of apps now. We have a website. We are bringing um, prospects to a website, engaging with them, converting them to leads converting them to revenues, delighting our customers with different apps, industry-specific, making the life of our uh, users easier. But as our company grow, there is really something else that's more important than all of this. What makes the difference between a good and a great company? There is an ingredient 
that will propel any company. And that ingredient is people. The most important asset of your company are your people. And we decided to uh, make improvements on HR applications in order to work on uh, the whole chain, and the whole cycle of uh, attracting talents and developing talents. And it all starts with recruitment. And you know recruitment is hard. You have to post on job boards. You never know if it's going to be very efficient, how much money you should spend. You're going to collect, hun collect hundreds of resumes. You're going to have to shortlist those candidates, spend a lot of time in interviews. And so we wanted to find a way to improve this. We already have other recruitment pipelines of candidates, all those uh, uh, features that are available. But there is something that a lot of companies are not taking advantage of when it comes to recruitment. Uh, something uh, that uh, is extremely powerful, and that's referrals. You know, when your internal employees are providing referrals of a friend or an acquaintance that they believe is going to be a good fit for your company and for the position. And so we wanted to find a way to increase the use of referrals in companies especially considering that studies show that employees' referral are the largest source of hires, even though they are not the largest source of applications. And employee referrals are also, uh, also have the shortest uh, recruitment cycle of all sources. So really, we wanted to create a job referral experience. And for that, we have created a new app, the referral app. And so we've decided to create gamifications on that app. Uh, and in that, in that context, you are a superhero, and you have to um, save the day by recruiting other friends, other superheroes, to uh, combat the villains that are lurking in the city. You can browse through job positions, promote uh, them on social media, or refer friends. Uh, you get to collect points every time you do something uh, great in regards with referrals, and you can use those points to uh, get rewards. And, you, and then you get to compete against a colleague to, to build the biggest team. So this is me as an internal employee. And uh, let's imagine that you know, I, I'm on the go and I meet a friend of mine. I can uh, start the referral app from my phone. And my friend is asking me about open positions that exist in my company. And you know, um, I get to uh, look at the open jobs in my company directly from the app. In this case, I have three of them. And uh, for each of them, I can look at the details of this uh, job position, but I also can refer a friend. I will be able to send him an email with a link, and that link will track that I'm the person sending him that email about that position. And all of this information will be tracked in order for me to get points and rewards later on. I can also uh, share on social medias or uh, with a regular link that I can paste anywhere. And again, all of this will track that I, the internal employee, is referring other people to my company. Then, um, as I refer people, I get to see my referrals here. And right now, I have two referrals that are in progress. I have Joran Jacob and Enrique Jones. And Joran has gone through two, the first two steps of, uh, the, the first two stages of the recruitment cycle of my company that have been defined in Odoo Recruitment. There is a very close and tight integration between the referral app and the Odoo Recruitment app. And I've also made points because Enrique, well, he went through the first step so far. They are still both in progress. So um, let's, let's imagine that Joran gets recruited. So we're going to go take our hat of a recruiter using the Odoo Recruitment app. We have access to uh, various job positions. And if we look at all our applications, we're going to find Joran somewhere here. Indeed, he's here in the first interview. We're going to hire him by moving him to the uh, contract sign stage. And as soon as this is done, if the employee who referred him comes back to referrals, he sees that Joran has been hired, and he can choose an avatar for Joran. Let's, let's select the robot. And now you have one more friend in your league. And you have collected new points, so you can level up. And if you click on level up, now you have a cape, and that's cool. So as you collect points, you do good things. You refer friends, you send links, 
they go through the steps. They might not get recruited all the way, but you are helping. Um, you get access to rewards, and those rewards, right now I can, buy a, I can get a mug, or I can wait a little longer and get an Amazon voucher. Obviously, you can configure it the way you want to incentivize your employees uh, accordingly. And that's Odoo Referral. So we have tools to recruit, tools to refer. The next part of, a, of human resources is to develop an amazing applicant experience. And you know when an employee starts in a company on their first day, um, you don't have a second chance to make a first impression, right? So you want to make sure that everything goes smoothly and seamlessly. You want to make sure that he has his laptop, his phone, his access rights are configured correctly, that his user accounts are set up. A number of different people in the company will have to coordinate to make sure that the right things are done ahead of time. And so there are a number of small improvements that we've done in that regard. So first, um, if Odoo supports multi-company, if you are in uh, uh, several companies, uh, you uh, now are now able with the new multi-company widget of Odoo 13 to look at the records of more than just one company. Even though you are still in one company, you get to decide the combinations of companies' records that you can uh, see at the same time throughout the application. And then um, we also have made improvements on the electronic signature app. And this can be used for all kinds of different scenarios, but one of them is typically signing an employment contract. So if we go to Odoo Sign, we'll have all kinds of templates, all kinds of uh, documents. If I go to my employment contract, I will see the ability of signing a document. All parties will sign that document, and when, once that document will be signed by everyone, everyone will be uh, notified of uh, these final documents. And as you can see, we get to drag and drop fields uh, on those documents and then send them uh, to the corresponding parties. And the system will track, store those uh, signed documents, know who did what and signed where, when. And then finally, um, on the employees, we have a new feature uh, in order to start an onboarding plan for when our customer starts in our company. So we just hired him. Uh, we have access to all kinds of information regarding this employee, uh, the, hi the hierarchy of where he's in the company, uh, some information about his timesheet, and if he's av available, he's already off. We just hired him. And um, we can now launch a plan. It can be an onboarding plan. It can be an offboarding plan. It can be any kind of procedure during... Uh, the tenure of this employee in the company where various people need to be involved to do certain tasks. And we want to remind those people, whether it's his manager, the manager of his manager, the IT guy, uh, to do the right thing at the right time by notifying them and reminding them that they have activities pending. So if we launch the onboarding plan, we will see on the right that a number of activities will be created and assigned to the proper people in order for this new uh, employee to uh, be onboarded properly. And so, for example, maybe there's a first day training to be done by his manager. We can mark it down, and just like that, it will be uh, tracked in the system. And those uh, people will be notified by here with the uh, activity uh, task bar here at the top on time. So we are recruiting people. We are getting referrals. We have an amazing applicant experience. The next step, of course, is a matter of developing and retaining our talents. So there are several things that we have improved for that. Um, if I go to uh, the employees, we have introduced backgrounds, resumes, and skills management. As you can see here, we have skills of this person. So if we are looking for all of our, of our employees uh, that are uh, knowledgeable about JavaScript, we get to just search that and we'll find them. This is particularly useful for the kind of industries like consulting firms where uh, what is sold to customers is the competency of your 
uh, of your employees, and you get to cross-reference who's good at what and who would be the best match for the job. Of course, when it comes to retaining talents, we want our employees to evolve, grow, and learn. And one way to get our employees to learn is to provide them with training materials, classes, and courses. And for that, we have developed a new app, the e-learning app. The e-learning app is very big. It's uh, integrated with a lot of other apps, uh, websites. It's integrated with surveys. There are mechanisms of certification, quizzes. There are features of full screen, embedded documents, videos, uh, steps, and a very good user experience when it comes to making modifications to these classes, uh, reor reorganizing them, and adding more content. I don't have the time to do a demo of the e-learning app because there is too much, uh, but uh, I have a video for you. Meet Odoo e-learning, the open source learning management system. As a teacher, you develop courses, define learning objectives, and assess students' progress. Publish courses for free or sell them. Here is a course. Let's add content to this course. You can use slides, web pages, videos, quizzes, or certifications. Use drag and drop to structure the course and publish when ready. Now, students can view your course where they want. They follow the course, answer a quiz, and get rewarded for their progress. Who doesn't like to get rewarded? As your course is awesome, they give you five stars and valuable feedback. And if they need help, they collaborate with other students in the forum. As a teacher, it's easy to follow your students. Their profile shows completed courses, progress in their learning objectives, and certifications. Certifications are great to value your courses. And motivate students. Odoo e-learning, the all-in-one open source learning management system. Try it now on odoo.com. So we have attracted talents. Uh, we have recruitment tools, referral tools, onboarding tools, learning tools. Now we want to have great tools for our employees that we have uh, hired. So there are a number of things that we have improved uh, in that regard to provide great tools for employees. And the first one is shift management. So you know, in the example of a restaurant, you will have different bartenders, waiters, chefs that will have to be available at different times of the week, different times of the day. You're going to have to uh, manage those shifts, know who's available, who has more flexibility, less flexibility, and can be very complicated with if you don't have a, a software that manages all of this. In terms of communication, back and forth in emails, individual uh, interactions with, with your staff. Um, so we have decided to create a new app called the planning app. And when I get to the planning app, I see the calendar of what I'm supposed to do, or uh, I can look at also the uh, total schedule of my staff per role. And so here I see the current week where I have bartenders, chefs, and waiters, uh, and where their activities are set currently right now. Uh, I get to uh, consolidate the data and see that I have Chefs, I have one on Sunday, then four, two, 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 one. That's good because I have a big dinner on Monday. And um, I get to uh, see all the details by uh, maybe clicking on any of those activities. If I look at next week, I see that those uh, boxes are striped. And the reason they're striped is because uh, that schedule has not been sent yet to the employees. So they are not aware yet of what the schedule is. Um, but before I do that, I see that there are open shifts, and an open shift is really uh, the fact that I know I'm going to need someone, but I don't know who it's going to be yet. So um, let's take care of this open shift here uh, that I'm going to assign to Doris by just 
drag and dropping because that's the whole new Gantt view that allows for this. And I took care of the shift, the open shift of the waiter right here, and I can uh, send the schedule to the employees. The employees will receive that schedule in their emails. They will be able to reply, see if they have more flexibility, less flexibility, if they agree to it, if everything is okay for them. And uh, those Stripe boxes became solid because now everyone is aware of the schedule. Now, we see that we have a red mark here. And the reason for this is because we have a conflict. Indeed, Randall has to work as a chef at the same day and time than as a waiter here. So we have a problem here. We need to resolve that conflict. So we can uh, change this uh, dragging and dropping this activity to someone else, and the red mark disappear. But I still have an orange mark here. And the reason for this is because that schedule has been changed, but the staff has not been uh, notified. So I can send a schedule here again to notify uh, Randall and uh, Mitchell that their schedule has changed to make sure that everything is okay with them. And as I publish and send this, the orange mark will disappear because now everyone is aware of the latest uh, version of this schedule. Another app that we have improved for our employees is the Time Off app. And we used to have it in the past, but we've improved usability and a lot of little details here and there uh, to make it even uh, more seamless. When I connect to the time, when I enter the Time Off app, I see the calendar of my different requests, my PTOs, any kind of types of leave that I might have. I see how much I've taken on the period or the year, how much I've left. Um, and uh, if I'm a manager, I get to see the kind of, of everyone as well. I see consolidated data here at the bottom, and I see that on the 12, I have a lot of people who will be off. And maybe that's a problem. Um, I get to click on here, Charlene, as an example, and we see that uh, we have the information of her department, the research and development department, and all of those leaves in November to make an educated decision about whether we are going to approve or refuse her leave. Uh, maybe for her, we can approve. And in fact, we have a, a dual approval. So there's a second approval, whether it's between the manager and the HR, maybe uh, a manager and the manager of a manager, or anything like that. That's optional. So we're going to validate and save this. And this becomes a, a solid box here. And because it's still too many with four, maybe we can move Mark to the next day, just like that, in a drag and drop. Another app that we have uh, worked on and that we have uh, introduced in version 13 is the approval app. And that makes the life of employees much easier because you get to um, enter a request or an approval for any kind of, of approval, whether it's a business trip, paying a bill, uh, renting a car, and whenever you do a, a rental, depending on the type, the types of the, the fields and the form is going to be different. So it's dynamic as well. Whether it's mandatory fields or optional fields, the employee will enter his request and we will be able to track all the notes, the communications, and who accepted and approved what in the system afterwards. So I'm not going to spend too much time on those three apps because there are dedicated talks about them in the next three days. Um, and as your, uh, as your company grows with all these apps, uh, you are uh, more and more successful, you are generating more and more revenues, and you have to start paying the payroll of all these employees you have hired. And so one component becomes more and more crucial for you. It's accounting and finance. And for that, I would like to call on this stage, next up, the one and only Odoo CTO, Anthony Le Suisse. Thank you, thank you, thank you Fabrice, thank you. I'm very happy to be here and I have some very nice feature to show you. But first I would like to do the same thing that I do in Odoo Experience. I would like to take a picture of you. So I will ask you to put your hand in the air and I will take a picture of you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. 
so when I arrived, uh, I think two weeks ago, I was a bit jet lagged. And so I woke up early in the morning and I went on the top of a hill to see the sunrise on this beautiful city. And if you're, if you're from the city, maybe you notice that at the left of the picture, there is the Salesforce tower. So that morning, Odoo was above and higher than Salesforce. <laughs> and, and you know, this was only the beginning of the day. So I'm here to talk to you about accounting. Some of you might find accounting boring, but if you do, you should reconsider, because accounting is essential. It's the language of business, and if you want to be successful in business, you need to learn and understand accounting. That's one of the reasons last year we decided to focus a lot of effort on accounting. Accounting is also a core application in Odoo. So what we did, we started to collaborate with accounting firms, and they told us all the problems they could find in Odoo, and we started to address all of them. One of the things we did in Odoo Online, specifically for accounting firms, is to add a dashboard where, you know, when you're an accounting firm and you manage a lot of customers, each of the customers is in one database, but you need a dashboard to know everything that you need to do and everything that is laid. So we now have in Odoo Online a dashboard where you can see all the database that you have and all the next activities that are pending. Uh, so with this tool, you are sure that you won't miss any deadline. So that's something outside of the product. It's in the platform. But now I will show you some of the features we implemented in Odoo itself. Okay, so let's imagine that we have a small company and we received three bills from a supplier. So what I will do, I will upload those three bills into Odoo. And Odoo has a system now to automatically try to parse the content of those bills and try to encode it. So the job of the accountant is not anymore to encode things. It's more to check that the system did the work correctly for it. So let's do that. The first invoice is a, wait, whoop, is a utility bill. It's for electricity. And I can check that everything is correct. So the only thing I have to do is just post it. Let's go to the next one. The next one is also a utility bill. It's for an internet connection, and it also looks correct. But we could imagine that there is a problem. Sometimes, you know, your supplier uh, round the taxes differently than you do, and you often have a one cent difference. So now, if you do have a one cent difference, you can automatically click here on the tax line and just change the amount. And then I will post also the invoice. For the third one, it's more complicated because that's a bill for uh, an electric bike. And because it's an electric bike, I might want to create an asset to depreciate this bike uh, for some, like, let's say, three years. So here, Odoo already found the right account, but what I will do, you know, because it's only the bike that, that, want, that I want to depreciate. So for the helmet, I will just use an expense account and for the warranty too. For the bike, we want to create an assets. And the way you do that now in Odoo V13, it's very easy. If I click on the account, I will show you that it's a fixed assets account. And on fixed assets account, now you have an option called automate assets. 
So here, it's already configured to create an asset, and you can choose to create it in draft or automatically uh, validate and confirm it. Here, I will do it in draft to show you. And you can see that the assets model used is a linear uh, depreciation for three years. So when you use that account and you confirm the invoice, it will automatically generate the assets here. I can jump on it. And because it's, in, it's still in draft, I need to confirm it. And you can see that the depreciation is scheduled for three years. And in Odoo V13, the way depreciation work and assets work, we, what we do is we actually generate draft entry in the future. And those are scheduled, and they will be posted automatically by the system when the time arrives. So those entries that are still draft will be posted automatically. So it means that when you look at reports, accounting reports, you can enable draft entry, and you can see already what will happen, including the depreciation. It's also valid for bills. So if you have a bills or an invoice and it's still draft, one of the big change with it in Odoo V13 is to actually merge the concept of an invoice and a regular accounting entry. So with this merge, what you see here is just a regular accounting entry. You can see on the second tab the journal items. So it means that if you have draft invoice, you can also go into accounting reports and enable the draft entry, and you will see what happens once this invoice or bill are confirmed, which is very useful if you want to forecast uh, some uh, revenue or expenses. So now I will show you the new um, journal view. So we have a new view in Odoo. It's called the journal view. And here I selected the purchase journal. So we will, of course, see the invoice that we just uh, posted. You can see here the bike, the internet connection. And on this view, and actually in every list view in Odoo uh, V13, you have those three dots at the right. And by clicking on them, you can choose to show additional columns. So for example, I might want to see the matching number, the due date. So I can select anything. And the system, Odoo will remember my settings. And the next time I come back on this list view, uh, it will automatically show me my uh, favorite columns. And this works with every user. So every user can make its own configuration, and then Odoo will remember it. And we also have a quick export function here. So if I click here, Odoo will generate for me an Excel file, and it will only export the column that I choose to display. So it's very easy. It's uh, what, you, what you see on the screen that will be uh, exported. And also, on this journal view, if I click on a line, Odoo will automatically display to the right the relevant document. So it's very easy to see where does this accounting entry comes from. And I see a mistake here. You know, We did the mistake together. We just confirmed the internet connection bill, but we did it on a wrong account. So here we selected an expense account, but actually we have a specific account for internet connection. So we need to correct that. And before, you had to go back to the invoice, cancel it, put it in draft, change the expense account one by one, and then post the invoice again. In ODV13, we have an easier way to do that. So what I will do is just select the relevant lines. And I want to change this expense account into internet connection. And because I selected multiple lines, Odoo will ask me, do you want to perform this operation 
on all of those records, and I just click OK, and magic's happen. Everything is changed in one click. And this feature is not specific to accounting. It's actually available in every release view of Odoo. I see another problem here. Uh, the electricity bill that we receive, we received it on the 1st of October. But actually, it's an expense that we should record for August. It's just that we received the bill late. So there is now an easy way to do that in Odoo. I will select the relevant line too, and I have uh, an action here called create an actual entry. So what I will do, I will select the date where I want the expense to be recorded. And it's an expense that I want to record in August, even if I receive the bill later in October. So what Odoo will do, it will create a journal entry that records the expense in August and it will reconcile this expense with a temporary account bill to receive. And once we have that, that bill, that bill here is recorded on this, the temporary account and reconciled with the uh, real expense. So you can see in just a few clicks, I can um, record something that I receive late. And it's, here it's not very useful, but it's especially useful at the end of the fiscal year because you are in January and you receive bills that uh, actually are related to expense of the last year. So very easy to do. Let's move on now to the reconciliation tool. So the reconciliation tool is the tool that you use when, for example, you receive bank statements and Odoo can automatically download your bank statement from the bank, but after, you need to process them. So we know that tools, but I will show you some of the new cool features that are available in it. So here, the first one is very easy. We receive a payment. It matched perfectly an invoice. We just validate it. Actually, you can even set up rules to do this this automatically, so you don't even see this. You can set rule and say, if it match perfectly and uh, a set of condition, then Odoo just post it. So you don't even have to click on it. Here it's more complex. I receive a payment for $1,000, and it's about two different invoices. And I got a customer on the phone, and he told me, those $1,000, I want to allocate 500 of it to one invoice and 500 to the other one. It's not very easy to do that. What I just do, I just click on the amount, and I can choose the amount I want to allocate on every line. So here, 500, and 500 here. This one is a bank fee. So the bank took some money from my account. So for this, I have a template already called bank fee. I will just select it. It will select the right account, and I can validate it. Here, Beckett's bar, I don't know what it is. It's an expense, but we don't know really what it is. So sometimes you have a bank statement line that you don't know exactly what it is. So you could skip the line and go uh, below, but you really want to finish to process your bank statement line. So there is a new feature in Odoo V13 called Suspense Account. So the way it works, you just select the template here, uh, that will post the entry on a suspense account. And here, you see you have the, the flag to check. So what it will do, it will record it on the, on the temporary suspense account and mark it as something to check later. You can also configure uh, to generate a next activities in Odoo, for example, to ask uh, somebody to justify the expense. So here, I will ask. Uh, Mitchell and me to uh, justify this expense. And I will show you later on the dashboard the effect of this. Here I have uh, an advance payment on something, so I will just uh, oops, leave it on the account of the customer. 
here I have a payment for an invoice, and this perfectly matched, so voila, it's done. So I came back to my dashboard, and you can see here that I have one item to check. That's the one I didn't know about. So if I click back on it, I jump again on it, and then this time maybe I know exactly what it is about, and I can record it. Let me now show you another feature. It's the automatic tax return generation. So you can tell to Odoo that you have to do tax returns something like every month or every three months, every quarter. And Odoo will uh, show you the date of the next tax return. This one is late. That's the reason why it's in red, because uh, it's the one from October. So. I will click on it, and here I have two amounts to declare. And there is a new button here called Create the Closing Journal Entry. So what I'll do will do, it will automatically generate for me the right jo journal entry. And I just have to check it. And if I agree with it, I can post it. And Odoo will attach the tax return to the entry and generate the next activity for the next one next month. So you can see here, now I have to do the one from uh, November. Now I will show you the new general ledger view. So that's, it's similar to the journal view. It's a general ledger view where you can see all the account. If you have a lot of account, you have a quick filter here to sort by class of account. And when you unfold an account, you can see all the entries in it. And like the journal view, if, look, if you click on an item, you will see directly the document related to that item. This is the expense we did. But if I click, for example, on the tax return line, I will see the tax return attached. And if I click on a bank statement, bank uh, statement line, I will see also the bank statement. And as in the journal view, I can select to display additional uh, fields here. Now that we have everything done, maybe we want to work with different accounting standards. And we now have a tool to do that. It's called automatic transfer. So the way it works, imagine that you are a company part of a group and you use local gap accounting in your country. And then maybe you want to generate your IFRS accounting based on the function instead of nature. So one way to do that is to tell Odoo to automatically, like every month, uh, generate, um, generate some accounting entries. So the way we do it, we have a specific journal called IFRS journal. And in this journal, we will post some specific accounting to balance the, count, the account from one standard to another one. So here, I will select the right date because it has to go through November too. And Odoo can do it automatically every month, but here I have to do it manually. So I will click here, it will generate the right accounting entry, and I will post it. And now, if I go, for example, on a, let's say, profit and loss report, you can see that I have my gap uh, profit and loss. And if I want to switch, I can switch the account, the journal groups. So this one will include my uh, specific IFRS journal. And now you can see that I have my profit and loss using IFRS accounting standard. And now that we've done that, because we are part of a group, we might want to consolidate the accounting of the group uh, globally. And we also have a new tool to do that. It's called consolidation. The way it works is you defined, well, you defined uh, for every company of the group, you map the account, let me show you this one. You map the account from the local company to the group consolidated account here. And once you've done that, 
you can, for every period, generate a report like this with, you see, uh, one column per company and then the total. And you might want to also do some manual adjustments. So to do that, you can click Edit, and we will add a column called Adjustment. And there, I can manually also uh, do some entry, like, you know, I will move 1,000 euro from this account to this account here. And I generate my report back. And you can see that at the top, there are red amounts. Usually, it's because uh, there's something wrong. And here, the reason is because I didn't map all the accounts. So I still need to map 13 accounts in one company and one in another one. Usually, when that's done, it should be zero. And the way we did it internally at Odoo before this tool was exporting everything into Excel, and then we played with Excel, and we generated the report. The problem is that at the end, we get a number like this one, and we know that it's wrong. But we, it's very difficult to figure out where does, does the mistake come from. With the consolidation tool of Odoo, when you have a number here, you can just click Audit, and you will jump directly to the relevant accounting entry. And if you click on one line, you will see the exact document. So it's very easy to audit where those uh, numbers come from. And of course, you can also use it to compare to previous period, like this. So if you are interested about those features, I suggest you come I think it's tomorrow we have a full track about accounting. Uh, I think it's in this room. And what I show you is just the tip of the iceberg. We actually implemented more than 150, yeah, 150 new features. So I really advise you, if you are interested, to go to those sessions tomorrow. Yeah, we also improved, you know, I showed you on those three invoices, uh, the accuracy of the automatic OCR bill scanning mechanism of Odoo. We have a 92% uh, rate, and it's improving, because as more as we collect data, as more as the algorithm gets better. We also uh, added a lot of new localization, uh, or we updated to be uh, up to date to the legal uh, law in those countries like Mongolia, Norway, Luxembourg, Italy, Ukraine, UAE, Argentina, Israel, Austria, South Africa, Chile, Peru, Belgium, Switzerland, Germany, Canada, Spain, and United Kingdom. And you might wonder. Uh, why the U.S. is not included here. It's because actually the U.S. is not really a localization, it's the default one. So that's the one that is the most up-to-date in Odoo. And then the other one are based on that one and we uh, apply the difference. Oh, yeah. Maybe you saw my presentation at Odoo Experience, but if you did not, you might not believe what I will say. The killer feature of Odoo V13 is that it's five times faster. And maybe, maybe you don't believe me, but I will show you a small demo. So what I will do, um, I have v, Odoo V13 at the left and Odoo V12 at the right. And what we will do, we will import um, a CSV file with 1,500 companies, and we will do it there too. And because I'm a good sport, I will first click on V12 and then V13. So let's do it. And Odoo V13 already finished. <laughs> 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 
And just, that's just a small example, but uh, for many common operations, here we have some example of everyday operation that you do in Odoo, like creating a sales order, validating it, you know, uh, uh, listing partner. So for all of these operations, you can see the time that Odoo 12 take in blue and the time that Odoo 13 take in red. So the smaller, the better. And the website is faster too, because, and because of this, I'm proud to announce that we now have a 99% uh, Google page speed score. <laughs> and you might wonder how we achieve this. And I won't tell you, because I don't want to spoil you, but it's something that we call in-memory ORM. And if you are interested about it, I suggest you come to the talk of Olivier this afternoon. One last word about uh, Odoo SH. So for those who don't know yet, Odoo SH is a platform we launched two years ago. It's a platform where you can host your Odoo production instance if you do a project with custom development. But you can use also the platform to actually collaborate with business analysts and developers and host you know, development branches, staging branch, and uh, really organize the workflow of the development of a custom Odoo project uh, on, on the Odoo SL platform. And since we launched this platform, Two years ago, it has been a huge success. We have more than, people created more than 8,000 projects on the platform. And this year, we didn't add many features on Odoo SH, but what we did was working on making the platform more reliable and also more scalable. So when we started the platform, we had a target of something like 100 or 200 users. And now this year, we can support on Odoo SH more than 5,000 users with the same SLA. Yeah, that's the end of my talk. I want I want to thank some people. So first, I want to thank the people from uh, Odoo Inc. So Odoo Inc. is the subsidiary here in, in San Francisco. And they welcomed us, and they did all the work to organize this wonderful event. So I want to thank them. A big round of applause for them. And of course, I also want to thank you uh, to be present today, but also because you are part of this Odoo community. You have to know that Odoo would not be here today without you. So a big applause for yourself. It's now time for me to wish you a very pleasant Odoo Connect.